Now we'll look at temperature. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to use and convert between the three major temperature scales. So first, what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. What does that mean? Well, cold water has a low average kinetic energy. So the water molecules are moving slowly because kinetic energy is merely the energy that an object has from its movement. Something moving fast has a lot of kinetic energy, but something moving slow has low kinetic energy. So in cold water, the water molecules are moving slow. They have a low average kinetic energy. So when the particles of a substance are moving slow and they have a low average kinetic energy, then they're going to feel cold. Now let's look at hot water. Hot water has a high average kinetic energy, uh, which means that the water molecules inside of the uh, the water molecules in the hot water they're moving very very fast. So when the particles of a substance are moving fast, they have a high average kinetic energy and they feel hot. That's what temperature is, a measure of the speed of the particles, the average speed of the particles, the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. That is definition of temperature. Now, all substances expand at high temperatures. And if we look at our thermometers on the right, the higher kinetic energy a uh, faster movement of the particles of a hot substance cause them to spread out more. This is why the liquid inside a thermometer rises as the temperature gets warmer. The particles are moving faster and they are spreading out. So, looking at our thermometers, on the blue thermometer on the left hand side, uh, the substance inside of it, it has it's at a low average kinetic energy. So the particles aren't moving as fast, it won't spread out as much. But here, in the hot thermometer, it's very high average kinetic energy, and the particles expand. And as it expands, it's trapped inside of this narrow glass tube, but so the only direction that it can expand is upward. All substances expand at high temperatures, and that is why thermometers work the way they work. The exception is water. Water, because of its unique chemical properties, it expands when frozen, not when heated. So water does the opposite of everything else. Everything else expands when it's heated up. The liquid in a the thermometer is going to expand when it's heated up. But water, water is going to expand when frozen. See, water frozen in a glass container is going to expand, causing the glass to shatter. That's why it's a bad idea to put water in glass in the freezer. Because when it gets cold, the water is going to expand, but the glass is going to do like everything else, and the glass is going to shrink. So if the water is expanding and the glass is shrinking, then the glass is going to break. Now we'll look at the three major temperature scales in use. First, we have the Celsius scale, which is measured, measured in degrees Celsius. And it sets the freezing point of water at 0 degrees Celsius. And it sets the boiling point of water at 100 degrees Celsius. And in between is divided into 100 equal intervals. <clears throat> now, the Fahrenheit scale, measured in degrees Fahrenheit, it sets the freezing point of water... Uh, at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 Celsius is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit and the hottest temperature ever recorded in the US is a sweltering 134 degrees Fahrenheit which is equal to 56.7 degrees Celsius and finally we have the Kelvin scale now the Kelvin scale is unique because, well, first of all, it's measured in just K. Uh, there's no degrees K, it's just K. Uh, and the Kelvin is the SI unit, it's the metric unit for temperature. 
Not Celsius, not Fahrenheit, but Kelvin is the metric unit for temperature. And it begins at absolute zero. Now, the Celsius scale, it begins, uh, it arbitrarily sets the freezing point of water at zero degrees Celsius. But the Kelvin scale, it sets zero at absolute zero. Absolute zero is the temperature at which there is no movement of particles. Now, as you recall, temperature is a measurement of how fast particles are moving. So, a temperature of zero means the particles are not moving at all. So, that is zero K. Zero K is absolute zero. So, what is absolute zero in Celsius? Well, it's negative 273 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature where there's no movement of particles. And on a Fahrenheit scale, it is a chilly negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Absolute zero is that temperature where there is no movement of particles. Now the coldest temperature that has been recorded on the moon is 100 K. Now in order to, for you to get a frame of reference, 100 K is equal to negative 173 degrees Celsius so it's extremely cold and negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is how cold 100 K is. Now the freezing point of water is 273 degrees K. Uh, excuse me, 273 Kelvin. Not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvin. Notice there's no degree symbol. Move bar on the bottom. Well, notice there's no degree symbol in front of my K. It's just straight 273K. That is the freezing point of water, 0 Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. This is what you should remember. This is what you must know. Boiling point of water, 100 Celsius, 373K. And you notice that the Kelvin scale from freezing water to boiling water is a difference of 100. On a Celsius scale, from freezing water to boiling water, there's a difference of 100. So, a change in 1 degree, well, a change in 100 degrees K is the same as a change in 100 degrees C. Therefore, a change in 1 degree K is the same as a change in 1 degree Celsius. And finally, hottest temperature ever recorded in the U.S., 330 Kelvin. So those are your three temperature scales, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. What you must remember is the freezing point of water and each three and all three of the scales, the boiling point of water at all three scales, and absolute zero on all three scales. Those are three frames of references that you must know.